everybody! I'm so glad to finally show you how I made the rainbow troll cake. I haven't actually baked in a while and this particular cake was requested by my friend from work for her granddaughter. All materials used will be listed in the description box below. I started with two 8 inch round vanilla cakes. I colored one pink and the other one blue. I always use parchment paper to line my pans, it just makes removing the cake so much easier. I marked each one with a ruler and knife and leveled off the top. Then I divided that number in half to get two equal layers. I repeated the same steps with the blue one. Don't forget to simple syrup. This really helps keep the cake from drying out. For the buttercream, you will need to separate it into three bowls. We'll leave one white and color the other two with pink and blue. Add a little bit of the food coloring and mix it until there are no more white parts. Repeat with the blue. Sometimes it scares me when the initial color is nowhere near the end result. Now you should have a white, pink, and blue buttercream. Take a circle of parchment paper the same size as the baking pan and fold it in half. Place it on your cake layer and cut it in half. Set the two halves aside. Keep repeating this for the other three layers. I placed a foil covered cake board on my Lazy Susan and spread a dab of pink buttercream on one side and blue on the other. I wanted to layer this cake so it would be half blue and half pink. Place one half of each color on the cake board. Add the buttercream one side at a time and carefully spread it making sure not to go over the other color side. Feel free to take your time. Then add the next color on the other side and spread this out carefully too. Then start adding your next layer. Blue on the blue side and pink on the pink side. Keep adding buttercream to each half and layering the cake. I didn't expect this cake to be so tall. I also cleaned off my spatula every time I switched colors. Then I smoothed out the icing on the sides and added my crumb coat. Make sure to keep each color matching the right colored side. I try to make each side as level as possible. Saves me some work later on if I don't need to fill in too many uneven gaps. Don't forget the top, you want to seal all those crumbs inside.
Then just stick it in the fridge to chill. You want it nice and firm so the white layer of buttercream won't pick up any of the colors from below. Then begin covering your cake in a thick layer of the remaining white buttercream. And sometimes your buttercream seems to have a mind of its own and just gets away from you. I try to match mine to the diameter of the cake board. That way it won't stick out further than the cake. Usually the cake board is a little smaller than the cake. I guess my calculations were a little off. I finished the sides first, then covered the top. Then I just kept smoothing out all the edges until it was as smooth as possible. Once again, it needs to be chilled. I'm using one package of fondant and I tried to cut it into six equal sections. Each piece is going to get colored one of the six colors of the rainbow. I'm using red, red and yellow for orange, the yellow, green, blue, and purple. Start coloring each section one of the six colors. Add some food coloring and gently knead it together. Keep kneading until it's one uniform color. Place it aside and color the next one. Keep going until all the colors are done. Now take each colored section and begin rolling it out into a snake shape. I had to take my rings off because they kept leaving dents in the fondant. Then take each snake and cut it in half. Take one of those halves and roll it out into a thinner, longer snake. Set that aside and repeat with the next color. Roll that one out to match the same length as the first one. Keep repeating this until you've stacked the rainbow twice. You could also do this with as many or as little colors as you like. I bet a zebra print would be pretty fun. Then just gently push all the pieces together. Yay, the rainbow, it looks so cool. Now I'm going to attempt to blend it together by rolling it out. I tried to go only in the direction of the snakes. It was hard rolling the side to side, so I turned it to make it easier. I wanted to try and get a blended gradient, so I rolled up one end following the colors as I went. This is a little trick I learned using polymer clay to blend colors together. Looks like a rainbow cinnamon bun. I flattened it a little and rolled it again. Normally you would repeat this step. The more times you roll and blend, the nicer the gradient will be, but I chose to roll it up only once. Then I just kept rotating it and rolling it out. Keep going until you get it the size needed for your cake. Mine turned out really big. It took up nearly half of my table. Get your cake ready and carefully drape the fondant over it using the rolling pin to carry it. I always start by smoothing the top first to make sure those air bubbles get pushed outwards. Then start pushing the sides inwards and down. I ended up cutting away a lot of extra fondant to make the flattening process easier. Then just keep smoothing out the sides. Cut away even more of the extra if the bottom doesn't fit as snug as it should. 
Then give it one last smoothing and finally cut the bottom edge so it's flush with the cutting board. I don't know why my camera decided to lose focus at this point, but all I did was use my cake lifter to place the cake in the center of my cake board. Then I smoothed out the sides one last time. For making all the rainbow dots, I used my rolling pin with the depth rings on it and a size 1A piping tip. I rolled out the fondant to the thickness of the rings, then I used my piping tip as sort of a punch. I wanted every circle to be the same size, so this worked out amazingly well. Then I just put them all on my mat. So many dots! To stick them to the cake, all you need is to use a little bit of water and a small paintbrush. Just paint the back of every dot and stick it down on the cake. I overlapped each circle halfway and made sure the first circle was lifted a bit. Then I tediously stuck each one down. When I got to the end, I tucked the last one behind the first one. That way it made a continuous border. A beautiful rainbow all the way around. At this point, the cake still felt like it needed a little bit more, and I still had so many dots left, so I added the same border around the top. There you go, a beautiful rainbow cake. Decorate with candles or some cute homemade toppers. Let me know if you'd like to see how I made them. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.